adversary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty heart. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings, instruments, and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 All oh, praises to you, God. Glory to your name. We praise you, Lord. We praise Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. all we come to do. Just to praise you, Jehovah. Woo. To give you praise. Amen. For that is your food. That is what you asked us to do. And that's what we're doing. All praises. We're not holding back anything else. We give it all to you. Whether we feel you, we see you, we touch you, we hear you, we just praise you. We just praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we let our praise be. Hallelujah. Our praise be. Hallelujah. In the name of Myself into his presence. Hallelujah. You're all welcome this morning. Online in house. I want to welcome you mightily into his presence. And I come to tell you, God's not done with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God's not done with you. I have come to understand the dimensions of God is not in line with our own thoughts. Our thoughts are limited, our thoughts are cageful. The dimensions and the move of God are so massive that we cannot contain it in our thoughts. Amen, amen. And that's why when God does some things, we are like, wow. But in the presence of the Most High, it's just a little thing. I pray that little thing in the presence of God will happen in your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now don't give up. Tell your neighbor, never you give up. Quitters don't win. Winners don't quit. Hallelujah. For as long as you keep going, you are winning. Every stride, every step is a winning step. But the day you stop, that's when you start quitting. That's when you start losing. And we are not made to lose. Hallelujah. You know, let me quickly say this. Cars. Cars are beautiful. You put a Ferrari in the hand of a child, in the hand of an amateur driver. I guarantee you, within the first five minutes of drive, that vehicle is going to crash. Because what that vehicle is built for cannot be handled by an amateur. It takes a seasoned driver, a professional, to understand the integrity of what is built into that vehicle. Likewise, your life, when it is run outside the course of the Holy Spirit, is guaranteed to crash. Did you hear what I said? It is guaranteed to crash. Because, you know, the other day we were talking, my wife was talking and said something. She said, you do not understand the intricacies of what God put together in this body. You have no idea. And a fool somewhere said there is no God. A foolish person somewhere said, oh, uh, the design was by accident. Hello? Have you ever seen a computer that was designed by accident? It takes somebody writing the codes, checking out the codes, making sure that all the codes work before the program is able to run. No program 
runs by accident. Men see the interface. They don't see what is back there. You don't see the back end. You don't see the codes running in the back end that is making that interface look so beautiful. Likewise, your life. Men see the interface of your life. They don't see the intricacies and details. They don't see the things that God is orchestrating and working down in your life. Listen to me, somebody. You will never lose. I have come to times in my life, listen and listen and listen. Heaven and earth may pass away. The word of God in my life will never fail. Amen. I know that for sure. Yes. You know, in the last couple of weeks, I have experienced God like I have never had before in my life. Oh, well, I think I better do the preaching, then we go to the testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I've experienced God like never before in my life. Yes. The intricacies and the details of your life they are so great that man cannot understand it. Do you know what? That's why man says our DNAs are different. Our genes are different. Our fingerprints are different. Now think about the one person that is able to create over 6 billion or 7 billion different fingerprints. I want you to begin to think of the intricacies. Somebody up there. He makes every human being different. You know, let me tell you something. The medication that works for you, for the same sickness, will not work for her. And people are like, but how? No, 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 no. It's because you are made different. And that's one thing I've come to appreciate in life. We are made differently couple of weeks ago, you know, I went out for a ride and I came back home. I'm sharing my testimonies as I'm preaching. And I came back home, you know, and um, I sat at my table, ate, you know, and everything was okay. Then I started having hiccups. You know, it started small. The hiccups started small, you know, those little... <coughs> then it increased... With such a tenacity that every e cup shook my entire being. I mean, shook my entire being. The chair, the surrounding around me were literally shaking every time I had a hiccup. I had it for 48 hours. 48 hours. Like that, and it kept going call my brother-in-law in Australia who is a doctor. You know, he told me or several things to do. We did. I got to the point where I said nothing is working. Nothing was working. And that's when I realized. Now, this is me now. That's when I realized every part of your body is connected. With those e-cups, my body was convulsing. Every part of my body, not just one part, every part. With those hiccups, my heads were swelling. You know, everything, I was like, wow, just hiccups. And, you know, my body was just a total mess. My wife will share the part, own part of the testimony. So, but, you know, for 48 hours, it was like that. I went to bed, I woke up. I went to bed, I woke up. Then, in between, we called, a, we called our doctor friend and said, this is what's happening. He said, okay. He said, let's try something. Now, he might have said, let's try something. What he said, as far as, you know, what was happening, being an e-corps, they have no correlation. But I believe by the influence of the Holy Spirit, and the fact that somebody, you'll hear about that person soon, was interceding. So the doctor said, okay, let's do something. He says, go and take Tom's. How many of you know what Tom's is? It's supposed to be for heartburn, not for hiccups. 
He said, let's try Tom's. And I took Tom's. And I went to bed. I woke up the following morning. Went about my day. Hello, listen to me. I did not realize I was not doing e cups. I just knew I woke up. I was normal. You know, my day, I just kept on at it. I didn't realize. Then my wife asked me, have you done e-cups today? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no. That's when I realized the king of glory Amen. had stopped to visit this body. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm telling you, God is faithful. Yeah, is. You know, let me backtrack again. A week before then, I was supposed to be in an accident. And, you know, somebody took my spot. And I stayed back. And the Holy Spirit instructed me. I said, stay back. I was angry. I, you know how you, how you get mad when somebody cuts you and you want to get back in there? <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said, stay back where you are. Don't you dare. You know, I was fuming. Now, I'm human. I was fuming. I was like, Holy Spirit, why? This is my spot. It's got my name on it. I'm always here. You know, and I kept reasoning and arguing. And the Holy Spirit said, stay back. And I stayed back. Not long after that, there was an accident. There was a crash. And the person that was in my spot, now as of today, has a titanium rod. Running, running down his legs and his hips. Exactly a week after that was the ECOPS. Now I say this to tell you this. Now let me pull up the scripture that um, Ecclesiastes um, to every season there is a time. 3 from 1 to 11. To everything in life there is a time. I'm going to tell you something you may not like this morning. How many of you are believing God for testimonies? No, no, no. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. You're believing God for testimonies. Praise the Lord. Can I shock you? The test that will lead to that testimony will shake your very existence. There can be no testimony without a test. It is when you pass that test it is when you overcome that test that you get that testimony. And that's one thing I just realized. I knew it before, but sometimes, you know, how you know things, but they are not really relevant until you go through some things. You're praying, Lord, give me a testimony. I want it. Hello? The first thing you're asking for is a test. And that test is what's going to bring the testimony. Are you listening to me? Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. Look at that. Under the sun. He didn't say a time to every man. He didn't say a time to answered prayers. He says a time to every purpose. God's purpose under the sun. You are God's purpose under the sun. And so there is a time for things to take place in your life. Verse 2. A time to be born. Hello. Hey, they give birth to us at a point in time. A time to die. Both my parents have gone to be with the Lord. There's a time to die. You know, there's something that I got to tell you. You may know, but you may not realize. We're not getting out of this alive. Amen. Nobody is getting out of this alive. Except if Jesus comes. And then we lift up to him. Apart from that, nobody will live forever. Right. Now, so tell that person that he say, oh, I can't die. You know, especially those wicked people in Africa who are stealing everything. Now, a time is coming. They will die. They will die. Everyone that is clinging to power, that is clinging to wickedness right now, I declare to you, a time is coming, and it is called a time of death. Amen. Everybody will die. The Bible says a time to die, a time to plant. 
and a time to pluck up that which is planted. If you don't plant, you cannot, you cannot harvest. It says a time to plant and to pluck up. If there is no planting, there is nothing to pluck up. If you don't give, you cannot receive. I'm telling you. The Bible says, the liberal soul shall be made fat. That's what the word of God says. I say this without, how do I put it? I don't care what anybody is going to say about this. The more you give is the more you get blessed. The end that gives is always on top. Never here. The end that gives is always here. And the more you give out, the more God blesses you. Because when you give, you become a channel. Hose, the garden hose, no matter what you do to that hose, it will never dry. Because when water runs through it, there is always a residue. Do you understand me? Wake up. People are saying, oh, don't give. Oh, men of God, are, they, are, they are using the money. When your thinking is that you're giving to that man, that is, what, that, is, that is what kills your giving. But when your thinking is, I'm giving to God, what can you give to God that can be more than what God has given you? Let me tell you something. Until your health suffers, you will not appreciate the work of medicine. Did you hear what I said? I didn't say you will not appreciate God. I'm telling you, you will not appreciate the work of medicine. The wisdom that God gave the medical people, you will not appreciate it until your health suffers. Think about it. Just the little thing I went through, just hiccups. I tried all the, what was that one called? Vas, vas, whatever, whatever. Vasava maneuver. Name I did everything. Nothing worked. I kept drinking water until there was nowhere to put water anymore. I held my breath, squeezed my nose. Nothing worked. Until the wisdom of God told somebody, take tongues. Bible says a time to break down and a time to build up. How many times have you broken down? How many times have you cried in your sleep? How many times have you sat in your living room and cried your eyes out? There's a time for that. Let me tell you something. There is no superhuman that will not go through hard time. Even if you were born with a golden spoon, there, the Bible says there is a time when that hard Hardness will come. Every, you know, I, I, I asked God, I said, why must we go through some of this? I know what God told me. Listen carefully. If you don't go through hatred, you will never understand what love is. If you don't go through lack, you will never appreciate what abundance is. If you don't go through sickness, you will never appreciate what good health is. You know, most of us, we wake up in the morning, we jump up and we start our days. We forget that somebody woke up that morning. The ambulance had to come get that person out of the bed. Somebody woke up that morning and they could not walk anymore. Somebody woke up with a stroke. Part of the body paralyzed. But you just jump up and you're like, yeah, my day is that. No, 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 no. You got to appreciate God for everything. You know, I, when we pray in my house, we, I thank God for the food we eat, for the air we breathe, for the clothes we put on. As easy as it is to get a cloth and put it on, some people cannot. You know, you look at the arrays of your shoe and you are deciding, okay, what am I going to wear? And somebody is thanking God that I have no feet. Is that not so? It says a time to laugh. I don't know about you. There are times when I laugh and laugh and laugh. And a time to mourn. We all go through it. And a time to dance like we did this morning. And a time to just fold your hands and, and not dancing. God, I refuse to dance for you today. 
I'm mad. I'm mad as hell. Hello. Let me tell you something. I never blame people when they are in that situation because they are pouring out their hearts to God. They are telling God, listen, I know you're God, but right now this is how I feel. That's been real. This is how I feel, and I need you to step in. Do you understand? A time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones. A time to embrace. You know that? Oh, you give everybody hugs, and there are some days, don't you just come near me. Hello, I don't know. Do you know that? There are some days I don't feel like getting hugs from nobody. Yeah. Hello, I feel it too. Tell your neighbor he's a man. Yeah. Hmm. And a time to refrain from embracing. Go on. A time to get. Yeah. We all love the time to get. But we don't like the time to lose. But it comes. Hello. What did I say? It comes. He comes. How many of you know that expenses don't show up until you have money? <laughs> they can lie fallow for so long. And suddenly money comes. And all of them are like, we're here. <laughs> we came together. <laughs> we need, you need new sets of tires. Your car needs to go to the shop. Uh, the, the refrigerator at home is broken. The washer and dryers, they stopped work. All of them happen at the same time. When money show up, they show up. Hello, it's called life. A time to keep and a time to cast away, seven. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent. Now, this is what I love the most. A time to keep silent. Tell your neighbor, silence is golden. Oh, I'm telling you, silence is golden. A man can talk about you, bring you down, and you keep quiet, and that same man will lift you up again. Just allow. Just don't respond. They will bring you down. They will, they will try to destroy you, but... In your golden silence, the same people will begin to say, uh, well, not really like that. And then they begin to lift you up. Silence is golden. The Bible says, do not answer a fool, lest there be two fools. But the same Bible says, answer a fool, so a fool will not think he's wise. So you got to know when to throw it in and when to withdraw. And keep quiet. Let a fool make a fool of himself. Oh, next one. And a time to speak. That's a, a time to love and a time to hate. I pray a prayer for you this morning. May you never starry too long in the season of eight. You know, some of us can be so holy right now and say, oh, I don't hate nobody. Hello, be careful. Before you know it, the seed of hatred is always a tiny seed. And it takes time to germinate. By the time it germinates, you've forgotten that you hate that person. But one simple word or action from that person, the reaction that it will generate from within you, You'll be so surprised at yourself that, wow, I had this in me. Hatred is one step away from love. Did you hear me? Guard your heart. Cleanse your heart. Forgive quickly. Did you hear me? Forgive quickly. The Bible says there's a time to hate. Yes, there's a time to hate. But the Bible says, let not the sun go down on your anger. Amen. Walk out of that time as soon as possible. A time of war. Hello? A time of war. War. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So there's a time of war. There's a time to do battle. But I tell you this morning, in the battle, you got to know the weapon to use. The world says, don't take a knife to a gunfight. Now, but the thing there is, if grace is on your side, even a knife in a gunfight will bring victory. Did you hear what I said? Gideon took 300 men to battle. All they had was torchlight and a, and a picture. That is the greatest madness of all. You are going to fight a battle. And the people that are your commanders and army officers, all they had was flashlight and a picture. You know what? As far as anybody was concerned, that battle was over. They're like, oh, these people are going to lose. They've lost already. But with God on your side, even a flashlight and a picture won victory. Jehoshaphat went to battle. They didn't even take a flashlight. They didn't take a picture. They just put praise and worship singers in front. They put David. They put Jojo. They put Pastor Nathan. They say, okay, you guys lead. Start praising the Lord. And they put them in front. And they still won the battle. So war, you know, peace is not the absence of war. Peace is not the absence of war. Peace is you being at peace in the midst of war. And that's why Jesus Christ said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. I tell people this, please, if you are not led, don't do it. It is time when the devil opens the barrage of hell and comes against me. That is the time when I eat a lot, I sleep well, but I praise more. That's all I do. I choose not to recognize the attack of the enemy, but I choose to recognize the bigness of my God. That's all I do. Some people, when things happen, they declare it fast. If that works for you, please keep declaring it. But for me, it don't work. If I'm fasting, I'm already dead. I'm serious because I'm fasting out of fear. I'm not fasting out of faith. So whatever I am doing out of fear, I've already lost the battle. That's why I never fight my battle in fear. I fight in faith. And guess what? Let me tell you this. There is no fighting or a battle that is fear. Have you ever seen a woman fighting before? You have not. They will claw you. They will bite you. They will kick you. Anything. They are excellent marksmen. A woman picks up a plate in the kitchen to throw at you. Guess what? It will get you. They don't miss. They are excellent marksmen. Yeah. They don't fight fair. You say, A, a woman will finish it to Z for you. And will create other dictions for you. Hallelujah. They don't fight fair. Hello, let me tell you. Listen carefully. The way they fight is the way you fight the devil. You don't fight fair. You know, I was watching a program one time. Um, uh, what was this? Ender's Game. Ender's Game. You know, I was watching it with my daughter during one of our cl- school, um, school classwork. And we were watching the program. And it got to a point in time that this young man, you know, a bully came at him. And this young man beat the bully. But when the bully was down, he did not stop. He kept kicking and he kept beating the bully. And he kept at it. 
until, you know, it, it was like a military camp, you know, for young people, ROTC camp, until somebody came to pull him off. And the commander of that troop watching called him and pulled him aside. He said, I understand the fact that you defended yourself, that you beat him and he was down. And the man said, what I don't understand is, why did you keep beating him when he was already down? No, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you why. He said, so that next time he won't come back. He says, so that next time, he said, not only him, but all the other bullies, they will realize, don't mess with me. And that's what we need to do. We, when we get the devil down, don't stop. Most of us, when we get him down, we relax. Yeah, I got my testimony. But when the devil pounces up, like the scripture says, he says, he goes about and he looks for seven more fierce and wild and mad demons. And he brings them again. So there's a time to eat, a time of war, and a time of peace. Next one. Go to the next one. I don't want this one. Thank you. It says, I have seen the travail which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised. That's what I want, what, the word I want you to see. To be exercised in it. Exercise means practice. So, you know, it's easy to tell people, I love you, I love you. Is, the, is that not so? But to show that love, it is easy to show love when you have. But to show love when you lack, ha, that's when you realize, indeed, I thought I love you, but I only, not even like like I, I just a like you. Yeah. It is in the season, you know, the test of life will show us our true colors. And I began to wonder, I said, Lord, wow. Some people, you know, if you want to know your true friends, somebody said, plan your funeral before you die. And you will find out your true friends. Verse 11, and then I, I'm going to bring it to a close. The Bible says he had made everything beautiful. Hallelujah. In whose time? His time. Not my time. In his time. And look at what he said. Also he has set the world in their heart. The world is in our heart. So that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. That's why nobody, please hear me. The Bible says, ears have not heard, eyes have not seen. It has not come into the heart of men yet what God has in stock for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. The plans of God for your life, nobody knows. Most of us have no idea what God is about to do in our lives. But I'm going to tell you this. Trust the one that is leading. Trust the one that is leading. You know, I, it's like the GPS is telling you, all right, you have about four hours travel to go. This is the route to take. What do you do? You trust that GPS if you've never been on that road before. Because the GPS has already mapped out the road. And he knows the road. And so he takes you there. God is your GPS. Jesus is your GPS. And you know that's why you know, the GPS of nowadays, they are so beautiful. It tells you, well, accident ahead. You are still on the fastest route. Or, let's cut it short this way. Because he sees ahead. God sees ahead. He knows ahead. Trust the one that is leading. You know, I've come to tell you this morning, your story is not over. You are in the season of the performance of his word. And his word will not stop. The Bible says, his word will not go back unto him void. But it will accomplish its purpose. There is a purpose for the word of God in your life. And it will be accomplished. So I tell you, you cannot die. I tell you, anybody, I cannot die yet. Until the word of God is fulfilled. When Jesus left at 33, one quarter or 33, one third, do you know what he said? He said, it is finished. That means I've completed my assignment. So, you cannot die until your assignment is completed. The apostles, when most of them were killed 
I think it was John. He was burnt in oil. The man refused to die. They did a lot of things. The man refused to die. Then eventually they banished him to the island of Patmos. And that's where he wrote the book of Revelations. Because it was not time. His work was to write that book of Revelations before going home. And until he had written it, everything they did could not kill that man. So I'm telling you this morning, God has a plan for your life. Amen. Hold on to God. Hold on to his word. Hold on to what he has said. Believe what he has said. Live by what he has said. And I'm telling you, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. You no, know, I stand here to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm telling you, you know, I say this to the glory of God. The grace of God has kept us in this ministry. People have no idea the challenges we have gone through. But his grace has kept us. You know, every Sunday when we can open that door, I'm like, God, you are faithful. Every Sunday when we can put on the light, I say, God, you are, you are faithful. Every Sunday when we can turn on the heat or the hair, I say, God, you are faithful. Every Sunday when we can be a blessing, I say, God, you are faithful. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? The grace of God has kept us. No, I don't take it lightly. 16 years of this ministry, I do not take it lightly at all. It is all God. You know, no matter how we look at it, small or whatever, I am eternally grateful. Because this is God. I know one thing is, I'm not going to share people's testimony for them, but I have seen lives in this ministry that God has shown himself faithful. People who have left and are still connected, I see testimonies breaking forth in their lives. I'm telling you, you know, it's, God is just so faithful. I'm tell, and you know, one thing that God does with all this is, he says, son, I still got you. That's what he does to my heart. He says, son, I still got you. you know, so this morning, I want you just to sit back. Like I said, we've only just started. There are testimonies that are going to pour in. I've taken some time. So right now, I'm going to step down and call on healing stream for the special number. Hallelujah. You know, believe God for it. Amen. Tell your neighbor, believe God for it. Amen. If he has said it, he will do it. Believe him for it. If you don't have a testimony yet, listen carefully to me. By the reason of the word of God, between now and seven days, you will have a massive testimony. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? You will have a massive testimony in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for healing streams. Praise the Lord.